So you got a used tank and you're ready to set it up or at least you'd like to, but the thing's all dirty. You don't know where it's been. You don't know what people kept in it. You don't know if it's been in a garage for the last six months or being used as a toilet. Ew. So it's really important that you get this thing all cleaned up. I'm going to show you how you can clean up a used aquarium and the accessories that go along with it so that it's going to be safe for you to use for your new pets. Uh, I'm also going to show you how you can kind of take a look at the silicone on the aquarium and make sure that it's going to be safe to fill. The last thing you want to do is fill up a tank that might pop on you. It's, it's a lot easier than you might think and we're going to use a lot of really simple and cheap tools to get the job done. So let's do it! What you want to do is look along the silicone in the corners of the tank. We can even do it on the outside here. As you look down the silicone, you want to make sure it doesn't look like the silicone's peeling anywhere. We've got a small, tiny little dot here, but that's nothing to be worried about. And then as we get down here, we can see there's been a little, just a little bit of peeling. This is probably from cleaning the glass and bumping into the silicone. Uh, it's important that whenever you're cleaning the glass, if you're using a scraper or even a magnet, you want to make sure to stay well away from the silicone so that you don't injure it or uh, pull it up at all because that's what's keeping your tank from leaking. This is actually not bad at all. The silicone also feels very sticky and supple, which it should. Uh, dry silicone is going to be a bad thing. You don't want it to look cracked um, or discolored in any way. So just looking around all of the uh, beads here. So we're going to look up both corners. We're going to look all the way across the bottom. We just want to make sure that We've got a good line of silicone that's not broken anywhere and that silicone feels sticky and supple. And honestly, this tank's in really good condition. Save for the little bit of marring, probably from cleaning the tank. It's in good shape. So now it's time to get all this stuff to the maintenance room. I just used my laundry basin and uh, we're going to get all of this stuff cleaned up so it looks new so we can set up a new aquarium and put fishies in there so they can swim around, have a good time and make us happy. Uh, I want to show you guys the kinds of tools that I use to clean uh, aquariums, especially when I'm just getting them ready to set up for the first time, especially when they're used. Uh, so I get everything from the dollar store because it's inexpensive and quite frankly, it does the job. So I use just a couple of regular sponges. I avoid any sponges that have uh, any sort of like scotch bright or abrasive pad on the one side. Um, last thing you want to do, especially if you're dealing with an acrylic tank, is scratch uh, scratch it all up so that you can't see through it properly. So using colorful sponges with nothing abrasive on them is the best bet. I also like to use a nice uh, stiff bristle brush. This is going to come really uh, in handy when we start getting to all of the buildup of lime scale and stuff that's on the uh, corners of the tank, stuck on algae, um, anything like that. This is going to do a great job. We just want to make sure when we're using it, we don't uh, abuse the silicone. We always want to protect the silicone. Silicone is the thing that holds the stuff together that keeps the fish safe. So also I like to get one that kind of is a little smaller in case I need to get into a nook or cranny that that gigantic one does not fit into. So we've got that. And lastly, just some really, really basic uh, flat razor blades. Uh, these work incredibly well for anything that's stuck on the glass. Um, so I always have a few handy. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is start soaking the things that I can soak to try to remove any dirt and debris, especially like stuck on organics like algae. Getting rid of that is important. So I'm just going to move this to the floor. I'm going to grab one of my buckets here and I'm just going to fill it with some lukewarm water. And I'm going to add a single capful of standard chlorine bleach. It's really important that you just use plain bleach, no additives, nothing in it. And what that's going to do is it's basically going to help melt off any of those organics. This works really well with plastic plants and ornaments. It's important though you don't go over a cap of bleach. If you put too much, it can cause discoloration, especially in the plastic plants. So now that that's filling, I'm just going to start chucking the plants in. And we're going to let this fill up all the way to the top. Come on, faucet. All right, 
that's full enough. The, the bleach has enough water in there that it's diluted and I'm not gonna worry about it really burning anything. So now we're just gonna get this out of the sink and put it aside to kind of soak and do its thing, give it some time. I like to give it at least 15 or 20 minutes. You can leave it in for as long as an hour, two hours, doesn't matter. You can leave it in, forget about it till tomorrow. I mean, I wouldn't, but you could and you'd probably be fine. Next up, we're going to uh, work on, what do you want to do? What do you want to, you want to tell me what you want to do? What do you want to do? Filter or the tank? Pros and cons, the filter is going to take more time because it's more intricate. Uh, the tank, probably a little bit more pertinent for most people uh, buying, you know, clean, so maybe, I don't know. So let's do the filter. We've got our pump and the filter itself. I'm just going to take all the parts apart all the different components so that we can kind of clean them individually. Everything just pulls apart and there's our impeller right there. And now this is just a filter case. The components, like everything basically, except for this pump, I'm gonna soak right down. I'm not gonna worry about where water gets. All of that is uh, perfectly fine. The pump, although these pumps are going to be sealed in epoxy resin and essentially waterproof, I don't like soaking them everywhere just in case. So uh, I'm going to clean this one uh, separate of everything else. For now, we're just gonna get everything kind of soaked down with lukewarm water. Hey buddy, what's going on? Oh, don't stand on the tank, dude. Don't stand on the tank. You're gonna help? You've been eating some food, I can see. It's all over your shirt, buddy. So I've got everything soaked down. Now I've got a pretty good idea of where all the algae and stuff is. As soon as it gets wet, you can feel it right away where it's slick or built up. Impeller's in really good shape. Um, you want to check the impeller to make sure it's still intact. What you want to do is put your finger on the blades of the impeller so that they can't move and then try to spin the magnet. You should get about a you know, three quarter turn out of the magnet and then it'll hit a stop. And same thing in the other direction, three quarters of a turn, it's gonna hit a stop. That's how you know it's still intact. If for whatever reason, the magnet keeps spinning and spinning and spinning, it's no longer attached to the impeller blades and that, that could mean you need a new impeller. This impeller is in great shape. I can even see on the shaft that there isn't really any wear or anything. It's just silver. There's no uh, rusting or anything like that, which can happen if sand gets in between the uh, impeller magnet and the shaft and gets all ground up but this is in a great condition. So we're just going to take a sponge and we're gonna take that sponge to everything and try to get all of that dirt and debris off of it. I'm just gonna start wiping everything down. Okay, so you'll notice that even though I've uh, given this a pretty good scrub uh, with the sponge there, I've got a little bit of lime scale built up here and it takes a little bit more elbow grease to get that off. I'm using my nail to scrape at it right now, but there's a little bit of it all over the filter. Basically anywhere there was water running, we can see some just up at the top here as well. So this is one of those great places for that, uh, you know, uh, firm bristle brush to kind of knock that out of the way and anything left over that the brush is not able to take off let's try the outside here i'm going to show you a trick to dissolve it which is going to make it a little bit easier to remove you can see this stuff right here is super stubborn so you know if the bristle brush is just not able to get rid of all of it we're going to just go ahead and use my little trick and that little trick is just uh, some everyday household white vinegar. You can also use cleaning vinegar. It's just a stronger acid. So what I'm gonna do is get some paper towel and I'm going to put some of this cleaning vinegar or white vinegar onto that paper towel. And we're going to let that paper towel sit on that spot where it's really, really 
stuck on and that's going to help dissolve that lime scale and that'll come off a lot easier just going to stuff this paper towel in there as well help dissolve it all and uh, we'll come back to it and then we'll wipe it off once it's all soft and supple and ready to be done away with tubes tubes cleaning the inside of tubes can be tough i mean you can get like a shish kebab skewer and uh wrap a paper towel around it and shove it down there like a chimney sweep or uh, you can get a foxtail brush. Now, I can't find uh, foxtail brushes like these at the dollar store. This is one, I believe, from Marineland, either that or Eheim, one of those brands, and it is a perfect fit for filter tubes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run water through the tube, and at the same time, just push the foxtail brush through and turn the tube a little bit. That's just gonna help make sure that any debris that was trapped in this tube is uh, knocked out and done away with. We don't want any extra organics that have been built up sitting in this tube that uh, just got trapped to stay there so that when we restart it, it's already dirty. That would be bad. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use this foxtail brush to do all of the little nooks and crannies and components where, you know, just the regular stuff won't work. And that's why they make these little specialized brushes. Impeller Fins is another great place where a foxtail brush can work a lot better than a standard brush. They're just basically built for this. These are a little bit harder because they got a big bend in them and this brush is not going to bend around very easily but we're going to fill it up with water and I'm going to do my best here and if there's anything trapped right in the top there we're going to try to dissolve it with a little bit of bleach but I don't think we're going to run into that issue because this filter honestly is not in very bad condition but you can see some of the dirt that just came out flaking off in the bottom here. That's just built up uh, biofilm and debris from the aquarium that gets trapped in tubes. We don't want somebody else's debris from their old aquarium and our new aquarium that's ours. That's gross. We want our, our own new debris. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna put all of this stuff off to the side and we're gonna work on that pump. We wanna focus on cleaning the inside of it. This pump doesn't look like it's in uh, bad shape. I do see a little bit of lime scale maybe that's built up in there. It could just be organics, but we're gonna get a brush inside there. We're gonna use that foxtail brush and we're gonna clean it up. And if there is anything left over, we'll uh, use the vinegar for that. So we're just gonna go ahead and stick that foxtail brush in there, move it up and down and turn the housing a little bit just to try to get anything off the walls that could possibly be stuck in there. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Just gonna give it a quick swizzle. Who doesn't like a quick swizzle? So next up, we're gonna work on the tank. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about this background. It's pretty cool, but I want to get rid of it because I wanna clean the tank up entirely. Ooh, there we go. Okay, they use double-sided tape. And you can see now we've got some glue from the double-sided tape that they used to stick it on. I mean, they did a really good job. It was super clean looking, but uh, we don't want that. So first thing we're gonna do, especially because we have the cardboard in here, is we're just gonna get some water in here. We don't need a ton of water. We just want enough to get things wet. And that's gonna make cleaning the inside of the tank a lot easier because I've got this cardboard stuck on the bottom and I don't know if that line is inside the tank or outside the tank, that's inside, makes sense. So we're gonna just take our brand new flat razor. Don't ever use a flat razor you've used for anything else. That goes for everything we're using today. You don't wanna use old sponges that you've had soap on or uh, brushes you've used for cleaning carpets or your car or anything like that. You wanna use brand new sponges and everything, which is why I went to the dollar store and did some shopping for this video. So brand new razor blade and flat against the glass. You don't ever wanna go this way, always this way. And we're just going to gently peel off anything that's stuck in there, whether it's lime scale or glue or cardboard in this case. And you see how easy that came off. There's no residue or anything left. Razor blades work really well for this. It's extremely important though. You stay away from the silicone. You don't want to get too close to the silicone. I like to give uh, a visual gap. Like if I can see, you know, a quarter of an inch or uh, half a centimeter between the edge of the blade and the silicone. I'm happy. I know I'm not going to get too close that way. So even with this lime scale that's on the bottom here, you'll see that it just peels right off. As soon as the glass is clean, 
When you move over it, you don't really hear anything. If you go over a spot that has lime scale, sounds like sand or something is under there. So again, I'm not gonna get too close to that silicone. I wanna make sure that I've got a distance from it. Nothing really likes to stick to silicone anyways, so it doesn't take too much effort with a sponge, a soft sponge to uh, remove anything that's stuck to the silicone, which is why I'm not afraid of leaving it alone. It will be very easy to clean. Uh, if holding on to a blade like this makes you a little bit nervous, they do make um, different kinds of handles and stuff that you can get to uh, make holding a flat razor a little bit easier. And you'll notice I've got my finger kind of just in front of the blade, and that's to make sure that I'm stopping as soon as I feel silicone, which means the blade's gonna be at least the width of my uh, fingertip there away from the silicone at the bottom. That way I'm not worrying myself about accidentally nicking it, protecting the silicone, super, super important. These blades tend to rust up pretty quick. I mean, we've just been using this for the past five, 10 minutes. It's already starting to show signs. This is exactly why I throw them away after I'm done with them uh, for maintenance and I just get a new one the next time because Now, in the event that you've got some uh, calcium scale or uh, lime scale buildup on the plastic of the tank, uh, using a razor blade is not really a great idea. There's a really good chance you're just going to cut into the soft plastic, uh, despite how hard you try. So uh, what you can do is the same method we used on the filter, where you just get some um, cleaning vinegar or white vinegar on a paper towel, leave it on that spot, give it some time, 15, 20 minutes, come back, and you should be able to wipe it away. Quick tip for you before you start any aquarium maintenance in any sink you have, these little mesh um, basically protectors for the drain that catch what is probably supposed to be food in your kitchen sink, uh, they work extremely well for making sure that you don't get any gravel or algae buildup or anything like that from the aquarium maintenance that you do into your sinks, clogging things up so you have to have a plumber come take care of it. If you look at the one that's in here that we've been cleaning this aquarium in, it's absolutely disgusting and full of junk. So, so, so just these save, save, save your sink. Save your sink. It's like a dollar and it'll save your sink. The tank is clean, so we can just put it off to the side for now and finish up with everything else. If you want to, and I recommend it, it's always a good idea to take this aquarium or whatever aquarium you've got out to a garage or your backyard, wherever you've got a flat surface where you can fill this tank safely to leak test it, make sure it doesn't uh, leak or pop or anything crazy like that. Now we're going to clean this gravel, mystery gravel, the color of which will be revealed in just a few moments with this dollar store sieve. Sieve, 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 sifting device. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a small amount of this, <laughs> this uh, menagerie of stones and I'm going to put it in the sieve, I'm going to rinse it, and then I'm going to dump it into a clean pail. Uh, anytime you're using a pail or bucket for your aquariums, it should be dedicated to your aquariums. I highly recommend you just go to the hardware store, grab a bucket and write fish tank use only on the side of it. That way nobody in your household accidentally uses it for something else, which could be catastrophic. So we're going to use a fish only bucket for dumping everything back in. Get a scoop of gravel, and then we're just going to rinse it off. If I find that gravel is uh, really, really dirty, um, has a lot of algae caked on it or anything like that, sometimes I even recommend um, just boiling it, uh, setting up a pot with some boiling water, adding it. That'll help dislodge and remove any of that debris. Um, with painted gravel, sometimes that can have a negative effect. Sometimes the paint will come off, but uh, it's definitely a safer way to get a, a lot of those organics dealt with. So now it's time to check in on our plastic plants and ornaments that have been soaking in a mild bleach solution. Well, they're looking pretty clean. This one I remember was particularly dirty, especially in the leaves. This is like a faux um, lace plant and it had a lot of stuff trapped in between the little lace portions of the leaf. And you know what, it's looking pretty clean. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to just remove everything from the bucket. I like using a little jet spray. Um, if you don't have one, you can just use the tap 
like so, and then use your hands to kind of rustle everything about to remove dirt. Not only am I trying to get rid of uh, any of the debris that's trapped in it, but I'm also rinsing off any of the bleach that could be left over. Uh, when we're done with this, we don't want any kind of a bleach smell. And even after we're done rinsing all of this, we're gonna put everything back in a bucket with fresh tap water and a little bit of water conditioner just to neutralize any chlorine that could still be there. Given it some time, it's been, I don't know, a couple of hours. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, wipe away, yeah, wipe away any of the calcification that's on the filter. That, the acidic, and the reason you use uh, vinegar is because it is an acid. You can also use citric acid, uh, which is in a powder form. You'd sprinkle it on and add a drop of water kind of thing. That also works really well. But, uh, We've basically got no, no calcium anywhere. So now we're just gonna give it a really good rinse. Okay, so the ornaments have been soaking in the now fresh water after being rinsed off with a little bit of water conditioner. Just gonna give the old sniff test. I don't smell any chlorine, any bleach whatsoever. So all I'm gonna do now is let these sit in the sink to dry. And there you have it. Now you know what to do when you buy that used aquarium or used aquarium gear. Before you set it up at home for your own pets, you can get it all spick and span and as close to like new as possible. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, drop those down in the comment section below. You can also check out the description if you'd like to follow us on Facebook or check out our Patreon if you'd like to support us there. And don't forget to subscribe. We have awesome content coming out for you guys all the time to help you figure out how to make your way through this wonderful, adventure we call uh, aquatics and uh thanks so much for watching thanks for schooling with us and remember if uh if you fill it they will swim